All right, so today's the day that we're putting in the piece that goes into the back for the, the QA1 style triangulated four link. Uh, I just got off the phone with, with Tate over at QA1. Yes, I'm not gonna give you a last name. Awesome dude, talked to him for a little while. And so yes, these are designed because this goes from 62 all the way up to 76. So it is it is what it is. We were doing, uh, checking all the angles. This one right here, it's either supposed to be straight up and down or slightly angled back. I got about eight degrees back on that. So it's good. As far as being level, it doesn't get any more level than both of those on either side. About as level as you're gonna get. Obviously we squared this car up before we started putting any of these parts together. So I'd say that we're good. I'm going to start blasting this in. It's telling me just to weld in these um, plug welds. I'm gonna probably just put a zip here, you know, one there, one in the back, and then just call it good as far as with the plug welds. So I got them all in there, welded up. I did a plug weld, and since I'm gonna be putting a little bit of beans to this, I just, I just decided to weld the top, the bottom, and then it just got out of hand and I just welded the rest of it and put it in there and then after you do it like this and it's still kind of warm, then you hit it with hide it black. Hey, let's hide it black. That's kind of the, the theme around here. I don't want it to be seen, don't really care. Let's just paint it, hide it black. Yay. Well, this is part of this too, is getting the rear end in and you know, as far as I gotta cut those off and put those on but while I'm doing that I want to make sure that these fit so I'm basically going to tack these in and you know kind of back brace this thing and you know give it as much strength as I guess an eight and three quarter can get you know pulling it forward so it is what it is this is what I got this is what I'm going to run and here's what I'm going to put on it and I'm going to kind of weld this in here kind of tack it in a bunch of spots not put too much heat in one spot because obviously these things do bend if you put too much heat in it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for, for those. And then uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to, I've already painted it, hide it black. So yay, hide it black it is. And we're gonna put this in and go from there. And then hopefully by the end of this weekend, my three day weekend, I should have this thing in and kind of mount it up. Hopefully, we will see. Alrighty. Well, here it is. It's all welded up. I'm gonna go get a nut and put it on that and weld it up higher. So that way it, um, I can still put the brake line there or maybe hammer it down. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with that, but I got that all back braced. I'm not gonna put their little logo in there. I'm gonna get an SDG plate and put it in there for the Slant Daily Garage, right? Anyways, so I'm gonna let this, um, I put the, the axles in there and they still slide in and it still feels good easy clunk clunk um, you know I kind of did it in stages as far as welding it didn't put in too much heat uh, just in one little section just kind of did it here there there and there those things like I said still sliding good I'm gonna let it cool down like that and then I'm gonna paint it hide it black here in just a minute and we'll call it good today in the math portion of slant daily garage we have to move these perches in and cut those off and put the new ones on. Well, I cut and obviously we all saw that I moved them from there into there, so on and so forth on there. So, you know, obviously when I cut it, it, it wasn't exactly straight. So here's what we got. So we know that the factory perches on that is 43 or so. The new perches I weld in were basically on the outside of the purchase is 39.375. The inside of the perch is 32.3125, which comes out to 7.0625. Divide that by two, they get you 3.5, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, my chemistry teacher would be mad at me because of significant figures. We're just going to keep rolling with this. Half you probably don't understand that. This is the inside diameter. I add half of this to that. That gives me my new center to center. Well, this is kind of a hard number to reach. So do I go 
seven eighths, which would be a little bigger? Do I go 13 16 which would be a little smaller, which would actually put the, the bottom bar going the same direction or an opposite, sorry, um, it would be going opposite direction of this one. Um, and then the new, the, the ones that would actually make it wider would be going almost the same direction as that. But to show you that it really doesn't really matter much, there's a formula. This is called trigonometry. So Katoa, if you took any advanced math, you understand this. Basically, this is your opposite. This is your adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. This is the angle that we're trying to find. This is the 90 degree angle. The formula is theta tangent opposite over adjacent. Well, we want that. So then you have to do the inverse of tangent with opposite of adjacent. So then just to make sure we did it right, if you do the exact same length on each side, this angle should be 45 degrees. So tangent inverse 20.5, 20.5 gives us exactly 45 degrees. Yay, we're doing it right. So if I decided just to make my life easier and go straight to 36 inches instead of this 35, that would make it basically 156 thousandths larger. So you let's, let's see what that equals in degrees. Tan inverse of that over that gives me 0 0.4367 degrees, negligible. If I decide to go to 7 eighths, which is larger, tan inverse of 0 0.03125 over 20.5 gives me 0 0.08734 degrees, even less neg negligible. So then if I decide to go smaller, it's the exact same dimension, but just a negative number, basically, because we're moving it the opposite direction off of center. It really doesn't matter. Basically, how I'm getting these numbers is that since I know this is the center to center, um, 7 eighths would make it 875. I just subtracted this number from this number. Um, same thing here, that to that. Um, even though one is giving me a negative number, it actually would be larger. So that's why I went with that one. And since this one is going to be inward, um, that's why I went with a negative number there. So what does it matter? It really doesn't. I'm not a chassis builder. I can tell you that, but I do know math just a little bit. I'm just going to go with the 36 because it's going to be easier to measure plus less than a degree. Who cares? I really, who cares in the big scheme of things? I have spherical ends that are going to be, these are the front end that go in there. Plus then I have these heim joints, wherever they're at, right in here. I got those, those heim joints right there. And what's, what's half a degree at 20.5 inches? Not a big deal at all. So what I'm gonna do is just measure from the edge over and then tack or cut this off make a mark, tack the old one on, same thing on this side and do the exact same deal. Now, on these ones here, they want a five degree down on factory for an A body, as far as the pinion angle down. I'm gonna do it just a little differently because here they're wanting it, they want about a one degree down pinion angle of negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tack this in there, put it up, put it essentially at ride height, which is here, which I measured before I took the car apart, kind of where it was sitting, and I got that number, which is about the exact same numbers they're kind of showing here, which is pretty, pretty damn close. I'm within 16 of an inch. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna tack these in at five degrees and see if that gets me it. If not, then I can blast them off and then rotate it also to I'm only gonna tack them in because we wanna get side to side. Remember, these were the Hondas of their day. They were essentially blasted together massively fast. And you know, as far as they would just use yucky pucky to fill holes. That all being said, we're gonna just basically put it in there and move it and just make it work. It's gonna be less than a degree off as far as everything here. I'm not worried about one degree of, of of angle. I'm not going to worry about it. So moving on. I am not an expert, nor do I claim to be. Sometimes you make things more complicated than they have to be. 
Why do anything besides put it at 35.5 center to center? That makes it a lot easier, right? You start splitting hairs and, you know, figuring things out. And I started doing a bunch of things. And I was like, well, you know, 35.5, that's 8, 9, 16 on both sides. Why not go there? So that's what I did. So it's just tacked. I put a tack there, tack there, tack there. And if you're not leaving DNA, eh, you're not working on a car. So this is tacked up. And I'm going to probably, this, this video is going to be kind of long. So I'm going to blast this one up for Saturday night and then... I'm also going to work on this tomorrow since I do have a three-day weekend. And hopefully we can kind of get things in here and hanging. Now I need to drop this down from this down to the regular pad and bring this back here and then re-level it. So I'm going to have to do that. And that's, you know, right now this thing, whole thing's being held on here by, by, you know, ratchet straps because there's a bunch of weight in the front. And I don't have any weight in the back. You know, just safety type deal. So, I think I'm going to post this video. And then uh, we will finish this up then tomorrow. At least make rear end in car. And that sounds like a good, you know, resting place.